Hi guys, and in this color grading tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create this beautiful woodland wonder wedding color grading effect in your photos just using Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the first thing you wanna do is simply go ahead and choose a photo. And as the name suggests, Woodland Wonder, I do recommend a photo that was shot in the woods or just simply in a rural environment. This is my sample photo that I'm gonna be using today. It was shot on this kind of nice kind of, I guess you could say it's a bridge, uh, leading to this kind of old church. There's lots of green in it, it was shot quite recently in the summertime and you've got these lovely greens and that's what we want to kind of like emphasize and change within this photo. So I do recommend a photo with lots of green in it and shot ideally in the woods or just simply in a beautiful place like this. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go over to the develop panel, then drop down to the basics panel. What we're going to do is we're going to change our basic profiles first. So go to our profile here. I'm going to go from Adobe Color. What I'm going to do is drop down to Adobe Portrait. This will ever so slightly change some of the colors and also increase the saturation ever so slightly. Next, what we're going to do is go to our white balance. Now, I shot at 6,000 Kelvin. It was a slightly overcast day and I want to add a little bit more of a warmer tone to the photo. So if you can do, I'd change it to 6,000 Kelvin as that's what I was shooting in camera and then match the tint to make sure that you got the right white balance accordingly. And obviously with this lovely wedding dress here, we can simply sample that as our reference color. Next, what we're going to do is go to our tone. And what I'm going to do is, for this photo here anyway, I'm going to increase by 0.25 of a stop ever so slightly as I find it's a little bit dark. Then I recommend, because obviously we've got a dress and we really want to show off that texture, it's a little bit blown out at the moment, I recommend going to our highlight slider here and simply dropping that down. I'm going to drop it down by around about minus 60. And with the shadows here, I'm going to increase them ever so slightly, just add a little bit more definition, especially in this kind of large bush in the background. I'm going to go ahead and increase the shadows by plus 10. Now with the whites and blacks, to make sure that we're not clipping, uh, as you can see, we're not clipping on the left and right, what I'm going to do is add a little bit more dynamic range in the image by simply increasing the whites and darkening the blacks, but only by a small amount. So whites here, plus 10, and then blacks down here, minus 10, just to add a little bit more information in the highlight and shadow regions. Next, we're gonna go down to our texture, clarity, and dehaze. Texture here, increased by a small amount, plus five. Now, with clarity, I do recommend any time you're shooting with portraits or any models or anything like that, recommend just ever so slightly reducing the clarity. For me, I'm just going to reduce it down by, by minus 10, but something like that just helps smooth out the skin tones. Granted, there's not a lot of skin tones in this image because the wedding couple are quite small, but if they are a little bit larger, you want to make sure you've got nice smooth skin and clarity is the best way to achieve that. And then lastly, we've got is dehaze here. I'm going to go ahead and increase that by 20 there and that will help add a little bit more contrast overall in the photo and the last thing i'm going to recommend doing is going to our vibrance here and go ahead and increasing that by plus 10. now if you want to know the difference between vibrance and saturation go ahead and watch this video here but to summarize vibrancy affects predominantly the mid-tone colors where saturation includes all colors globally including colors found very dark and very bright within the scene so vibrancy can just help just mostly highlight some of the photos or most of the colors found within the mid-tone region of our photo, the exposure. Okay, so once we've gone off that, what we're gonna do is turn off the basics panel and we're gonna drop down to tone curve. Now inside tone curve, we're gonna create a very soft S curve to add a little bit more contrast in the highlights and shadows, but we're also going to be affecting the black regions, add a little bit more of a faded effect in the shadow regions. I really like this effect, especially if you're shot in the woods with a lot of contrast. It's quite nice just to remove a little bit of dynamic range in the black areas. So what we do to do this, all we're gonna do, open up our tone curve. What we're gonna do is make sure go to our parametric curve, turn that off, make sure we're in our point curve here. And then what we're gonna do is lift up the blacks ever so slightly. So an input of zero, so that's pure black and output, and we're gonna increase that by 20 there. Now, to create a little bit more of a contrast effect, what we're gonna do is bring the shadows down ever so slightly, and then what we're gonna do is bring up the mid-tones. There we go, go for something like this, very soft, and then bring up those highlights slightly. So we're just emphasizing adding a little bit more information in the highlights, pretty much keeping the mid-tones the same, and then darkening the shadows. 
but as it falls into blacks, we're raising it ever so slightly. So as you can see, we're getting this very soft S curve appearing in our image. Now again, you might want to adjust it a little bit, maybe a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, depending on your photo. If you're finding your exposure is really far off, I recommend going back to the basics panel and affecting it using the exposure slider. Try not to fix the exposure within the tone curve, just try to make effects with it. That's the most important thing. So what I'm gonna do is just go for something like so. Okay, so I'm really happy with that. So brightening the highlights, darkening the shadows, and brightening the black regions and keeping the mid-tones the same. And once you've done that, all you need to do is simply turn off the tone curve. Right, so now let's go ahead and color grade this photo. Let's go to our color mixer tool. And it's broken into hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue is the type of color Saturation is the intensity or the amount of that color within your photo. And then lastly is luminance, which is the brightness, how bright or how dark that specific color is. So let's go ahead and change the hue first. What we're gonna do is go to reds and oranges. We're gonna leave those alone. Reason is there's a lot of reds and oranges found within skin tones. And if you drastically change that, you can drastically change the skin tones, which is not something you wanna do, especially with portrait photos, or if you're doing any wedding photos like this. Okay, so we're gonna leave those alone. We're gonna jump over to yellow. Now in yellow here, I recommend quite a, quite a dramatic effect because we wanna create that woodland effect, nice dark browns. So I recommend going to our yellow slider here and dropping that down by minus 70. Next, we wanna target the greens. We wanna change the color as well by changing that by minus 60. And then it's the same with the aquas. We're gonna go for minus 25. And then lastly, we've got blue here. We're gonna drop that down by minus 10. And already we can see we're creating quite a dramatic effect, adding a lot more warmer tones, removing a lot of those yellows and replacing them with more orangey tones as well. Now in the orange here, I'm just gonna make it ever so slightly change. We're gonna go for minus five there just to fix some of those tones in the black regions. But as you can see, it's not affecting the overall skin tones of the couple here, which is really, really important. Make sure any change that you're doing, make sure it does not affect the skin tones or the lips specifically, which is predominantly why we're not affecting the reds or oranges, although I've just made an ever so slight change. Okay, so now let's jump over to saturation. Okay, so firstly, let's go to the reds here. What we're gonna do is reduce those by minus 15, and it's the same situation with oranges, although we're dropping it by a slightly small amount by minus 10. Then what we're gonna do is go to the yellows here. We're gonna drop those down by minus 40. And then we're gonna do is go to the greens here and drop those down as well, but not by as much, by minus 30. And then we've got the aquas here, we're gonna drop those down by minus 50. And then lastly, we've got the blues here, we're gonna drop those down by minus 30. So you can see we're darkening the photo, slightly removing saturation. What we're gonna do is fix that in our luminance sliders. So okay, so once we've done that, let's jump over to luminance. And then what we're gonna do is gonna to go to our reds, darken those by minus 15. We're gonna brighten the oranges by plus 10. We're gonna to go to yellows here. We're gonna drop those down by minus 30. And it's the same situation with greens. Drop those down by minus 30 as well. And then we've got aquas here. Drop those down by minus 20. And it's the same situation with blue, minus 20 there. And that's pretty much all we're gonna be doing in the color mixer tool. So we can see we've targeted predominantly the more greeny colors and kind of remove them, add a little bit more of this darker tone to the image. What we've done is go into the saturation here. We can see we've taken out some of those colors found in the yellows and especially blue areas by not majorly affecting the reds and yellows, although we've added them slightly. And then lastly, with luminance, we're brightening them up a little bit. So we're actually, what I might do is actually increase the, I might go for minus five on the reds instead, just fixing the skin tones there. I don't wanna make them look too washed out. Okay, so once we've done that, turn off the color mixer tool. Now we're gonna to go to color grading. What we're gonna do is create more of a split tone effect. So we're gonna target the highlights, and then we're gonna target the shadows and add a color independently from each other. It used to be called split toning, but now color grading allows us to target mid tones as well, but we're not gonna be doing that in this video. Okay, so what we can do is we can target them here, or I like actually blowing them up. So we've got shadows, mid tones, and highlights. Let's go for the highlights first. What I recommend doing is going to our hue slider here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the hue of 30. You can actually adjust it with the color wheel as well if you want, and then add in that color. We're gonna go to saturation here. I'm gonna increase that by 20. And what we've done, is we've added in an orange color cast over the highlight regions. And what we're gonna do is basically the same situation, but instead we're gonna target the shadows. So what we're gonna do is go to our hue here. I'm gonna increase that again, change the hue. So we're gonna target that color, hue of 30. And then what we're gonna do is go to our saturation here. And instead of doing 20, I'm going to do 10. So we're adding a little bit more of a slightly warmer tone to the overall image, predominantly targeting the highlight regions, which is predominantly the dress, and then the shadow regions here as well. Now, if, 
the reason I like leaving the mid-tones alone is because skin tones are predominantly found in the mid-tones and we don't want to add a color cast over that. We want to keep them as natural as possible. So to fix that or not to fix that later on, what we do is target the highlights and then the shadows, and try and leave those mid-tones alone. And we can actually change that with blending and balancing if you want to. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the color grading panel, because it's an amazing tool for color grading your photos, go ahead and watch this video here. But that's pretty much a run through of what the actual effect does. Okay, so what we're gonna do is turn off the color grading panel. And what we're gonna do quickly go into details. I'm just gonna add a little bit of noise reduction just to this image, uh, not by much, go for something like so. Might just zoom in, make sure we've got enough color noise reduction. I was shooting this at ISO 100, so there's very little color noise, but if I'm ever creating a preset, I always like adding in a little bit, just in case I did shoot at slightly higher ISOs. Okay, so details are off. Next we're gonna do is lens correction, making sure this is turned on. So that will remove chromatic aberration, as well as enable profile corrections. And you can see the lens that I used, is the Sigma 35mm f1.4 art. Okay, so we'll turn off that. All we're gonna do now is drop down to effects, and this will allow us to apply two effects to the image. A post-cropping vignette, which is great if your subjects are in the center of the frame, and what we're gonna also do is add in a little bit of grain. So with our post-cropping vignette, I'm gonna do is go to minus 25 for this effect, add a darkening effect, but it's quite strong. So what I recommend doing is going to that feather there and increasing that to plus 100, adding a nice soft feathered effect to that vignette. And then lastly here, we've got the grain. Now with the grain here, it's really dependent on how much you'd like to add. I like adding in around about 30% of grain and then changing the roughness and size accordingly, depending on the resolution of my photo. So I'm gonna do is go to my grain here and increase that to 30. Size, I like increasing to 30. And then lastly here, roughness, I like increasing that to around about 60. So if we go ahead and zoom in, you can say we've got this nice grain effect applied to the overall photo. It's not completely ruined the photo. And again, it's really optional if you'd like to add in grain, but I'm starting to like adding in grain. It adds a little bit more of this kind of more, I don't know, vintage feel to the photo. And I think it works really well with this color grading effect. But again, totally optional extra. And the last thing we're gonna do is go to our calibration tool. Now, the calibration tool, really handy for color grading, especially because you can split with the red, green, and blue primaries. And you can actually change the source color of your image, which is really handy for color grading because it creates this more global effect. Again, if you'd like to learn more, go ahead and watch this video here. It's my masterclass on the color grading panel. But all we're gonna be doing today is pretty much targeting just the green and blue primaries. So we can go to our green here, increase the green primary color by plus 10. Then we're going to go to the blue primary here. I'm going to decrease that by minus 10. And then with the saturation, we're also going to decrease that by minus 10 as well. And that's it. That's all we'll need to do. Now, one last thing I'd probably do is actually just go to my masking panel here. What I'd probably do is add in a linear gradient. I'm just going to target the bottom corner here. And I'm just going to go ahead and darken that ever so slightly just to basically remove interest from that kind of murky lake that we were shooting in. Uh, so I might reduce it like so. And then the last thing I reckon I'm probably doing is going to my masking panel. I'm gonna go to my radial gradient. So this is my circle gradient. Add a gradient just where the sky is. And what I wanna do is add a little bit of a blooming effect. So to do that, I'm gonna go to my exposure, brightening that ever so slightly, right about like 0.5 of a stop. And then what I'd probably do is go all the way down to where you've got your texture clarity and dehaze. Go to your clarity here and actually reduce that down a little bit, adding a bit more of a blooming effect, but specifically just to the top section here. So we've got this darkened edge on the bottom right and this brighter area on the top right. And you kind of want to do it where the sky is appearing. Again, in the woodlands, it might not be in your photo, but it adds nice blooming effect to the highlight regions, which I actually really like. So what I can do now is show you the before and the after. And I must say, I actually really, really like this effect, which is why I call it Woodland Wonder. Here is the before and here is the after. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So that is how you can create this beautiful color grading effect in your photos just using Lightroom. And if you wanna support this channel, go ahead to the link in the description where you can actually buy this preset as well as my preset packs and photo overlays. So if you wanna get some great presets to really speed up your editing workflow, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. It really is much appreciated. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.